Hello, good morning. Um, welcome to our break session of VeChain. Uh, it's very glad to be in San Francisco. Honestly, I've been staying here for one month. So I kind of feel um, I'm in the wrong time. i supposed to be in China, right? Because uh, last uh, weekend, China made a big announcement about the blockchain. And there are very funny stories about that. They're saying uh, in that weekend, Saturday and Sunday, the big enterprise, all of the listed companies to run the speed at a startup. Like we received a message at like 11 p.m. on a Saturday or Sunday saying, oh, I need your proposal because I need to make some announcement on the next Monday. So um, it's, it's very funny. Um, so what just happened, like I just mentioned, um, China and the U.S. has all big news about the blockchain right now. Um, President Xi Jinping urges accelerated blockchain development and adoption to the whole country, while Zuckerberg, um, representing the Libra, is suffering kind of like investigation or um, hearing from senators. Um, actually, I think both of them are in a positive. Um, for sure, China is very positive right now. Um, you know, kind of bring out the, let's say, the new wave how to, and, and the passion from the people, like, oh, the bull market is coming, uh, we want to go more. Um, but also, what happened in Libra is also give us some kind of, um, let's say, um, like sign, you know, we, we need to keep calm. We don't want to go for another high, but really think through, think really carefully what we're missing. And the regulation is also part of something like hurdle to stop blockchain go to the mainstream to the main adoptions, right? So there's some takeaway, at least here. Firstly, everybody knows right now blockchain now is in a national level strategy, and the big countries start to consider this as not only the small countries anymore. We heard about too much news about Malta, um, you know small countries in Europe, but now China and, and US even are going a different path, but actually aim for the same goal, to be the next leader in the position and wanted to seize the opportunity of the blockchain as a strategic technology for the nation. And secondly, everybody is talking about the future of the blockchain is blockchain needs to prove the business value. If we just talk about the trading or cryptocurrency trading without any valuation, then no future. So the blockchain needs to prove its business value to go for the next stage. And that's actually the third opinion is coming from myself. We always wanted to drive business application first and financial application later. Um, I can show you a story when I get started like in 2015, I decided to quit my job in Louis Vuitton and go for all in to the blockchain space. So I spent quite a few months traveling around globally, just try to pick up you know, what's happening and what people are thinking, what people try to do in the blockchain space. And I find a very interesting thing at that time in 2015, 99% of startup in blockchain are focused on financial applications. So I was thinking like, it's, that doesn't seem right. Um, for me, you know, the, you got to have like a business application first. And finance is actually supporting the different business. So if you don't have business activity on the blockchain first, why you need a finance application by blockchain? You know, it's kind of like, the, for, for sure, it's creating the hype, creating the bubble, because, you know, they don't have the real business to support by this kind of technology. So we've been, we have been focused on this part, like really using the business application, we're focused on business application building first, and later on, then we talk about you know, financial applications. And for sure, as a summary, blockchain is on the way to the mass adoption, not because China says so. Uh, for sure, when China says so, we're talking about 1.3, 1.4 billion population uh, in that country. 
And the mass adoption will be you know, accelerated by this announcement for sure. But also, I, I'm sure more countries will catch up and the real target for the blockchain should be mass adoptions. That's we have been talking for years. And last but not least, very importantly, who can drive the mass adoption? Who can drive the technology to you know, the real application, to the real business, and really change the world, change people's life? We can refer back to the internet. When internet was born, internet technology was born from laboratory, whatever university, or even the military, but only the enterprises, only the professional team are able to drive the technology to the people's life. So blockchain goes go through like this for sure, and we believe that. And we honestly, we have been seeing, we stay in this blockchain space for too long time, I would say. Uh, the first time I get to know about Bitcoin was 2013, and when I started VeChain was 2015, we see too much, um, we saw too much chaotic situation, honestly. Uh, lots of bad guys uh, playing the bad stuff, scams run away, all of the bad things. So we need the, you know, the professional team, we need the enterprise to drive this. Meaning also, we need a regulation. We need a, that kind of rules to allow the good guys to you know, play the good face and bad guys got kicked out, get penalty, right? So that's some uh, takeaway from the last weekends. And we have been thinking this for years and honestly, this is a map to show uh, how blockchain uh, drives and how blockchain goes through the different stages. And we are right in a very key moment right now. Um, yesterday, or today, yeah, it's today, is the anniversary of white paper, 11 years anniversary of white paper of Bitcoin. And starting from 2008 until um, 2015, honestly, it was quite a, Let's, let's call it like a dark forest time. Um, people, very few people know about Bitcoin, only the technical guys that play around, but 2015 really make a difference. There are a couple of reasons. Firstly, um, in The Economist, the magazine, The Economist, published an article, it's called The Blockchain is a Trust Machine. In October of 2015, it really creates, um, it's fine, it really creates the big, um, wave to the mainstream. Uh, the mainstream people are start to really look into the blockchain technology. And also 2015, um, Ethereum launched, considered as a 2.0 of blockchain, other than just 1.0, like Bitcoin, that kind of a purely ledger system, because Ethereum conduct, um, you know, virtual machines, smart contract, allow the blockchain technology to carry on more complicated or more sophisticated business activities, right? Now, in 2018, like last, last year and 2019, these two years are very critical because after certain years of development of the technology, the infrastructure, or services like Explorer, mining pool, wallets, that kind of basic offerings, we really need to move on to the next, next stage, which is mass adoption. How do you get the normal user, I mean, non-technical people, to use blockchain. Like, you cannot count on, for example, my mom couldn't remember, like, private keys, right? He could, she couldn't, like, back up several, um, you know, paper or whatever uh, for her private keys. How could, how could she become a blockchain user? With the, you know, in the current stage, in the current situation, the UI, UX, whatever, um, for the blockchain applications, it's very hard. So we need to conquer that so we are able to move on to the next stage for the mass adoptions. I, I'm gonna show something to you. What is the real mass adoptions? Exactly describe uh, the, the same, similar level age of, you know, of my mom, that kind of people, are using blockchain in the real life. And you don't have to understand how blockchain works. Eventually, blockchain is an invisible technology. It's like you're using email every day, but you don't care how SMTP works, how TCP IP works, which is fundamental to an email application. 
So blockchain is going to be the same. And going further, let's say we predicted 2022 and even beyond, there will be more application, more um, business model even, like new business model coming from using the technology and going further. So what is a fundamental, what is like basic mindset about that? Actually, it's very simple. We still can refer to the internet. What internet company do? Actually, internet company, all of the internet companies, they just try to, uh, first step is bring more people to the internet, you know, start to use the internet. And then there are much more data on the internet. They just maximize the value of the data on the internet. Right? Whatever, Facebook, Amazon, Alibaba, Tencent, they're doing exactly the same thing. Well, in a different forms, but actually fundamentally it's the same. So what we try to do, I want to share the secret with every one of you, is we try to maximize the value of data on the blockchain. It's very simple. It could be served for insurance company, it could be served for auditing company, or it could be served for any kind of... Uh, uh, supplier management enterprise, they're using the data on the blockchain, they're using the unique feature of data on the blockchain, which is public, transparent, immutable to change, to create the new value, whatever is saving the cost to many suppliers, or improve the efficiency to extend the market to more auditees, to, to more, you know, grow from a selective market to a more broader market, whatever. So. That's fundamentally, we're doing just the one thing, very simple thing, is try to find the value and maximize value of data on the blockchain, right? But simple to say, it's hard to achieve for sure. That's for most of the things in the world. Um, so before we go down, like, how are we gonna do that? I wanted to share one thought recently we developed um, you know, during Condoleezza flights, I've been doing that kind of the travel all the time across different continents. I've been thinking, what is the roadmap or what is the path for um, blockchain to go through? So I summarize here, different steps. The first stage, like, you know, until 2018, we call technical consensus. So the major force of the blockchain space or industry majorly drive by technical guys. For example, like uh, the mystery Satoshi Nakamoto um, or the Vitalik or a bunch of you know, technical leaders and also the, the main um, players in the market are technical developers. And then they build up some kind of consensus e either using uh, limited or selective languages. Um, like Golang, C, Python, that kind of languages, or similar technical architecture to build up the current blockchain networks to, um, um, to create the different applications. So we call it, it's a technical consensus. But now we're kind of hit in the bottleneck of the entire blockchain development because we're looking for um, you know, business applications. We're looking for the value, how to bring the technology to the business. Why people will pay for using the technology to generate the new value. So then we're talking about a business consensus. The business consensus means why the different people, why the different business entities or legal entities willing to join together and to do something together and achieve the same goal with proper economic motivations, right? Companies, enterprises are looking for profits, which is quite, this, this is a fun, even maybe we can look at the great good, the saving the planet, that kind of thing, but down to earth, you gotta feed your employees, you gotta pay your rents. So eventually, you need to find a proper economic motivation, but could be better than the current company working together, that kind of collaboration, you can have a more uh, public, transparent allocation of um, profits. That kind of way, thanks for blockchain technology. But we need to find a business consensus among the different entities, among the different players in the, in the space, so that we are able to create the new disruptive and innovative application using the blockchain technology. But this is very, very hard, honestly, very, very hard. I have to say that 
in the last four years, um, well, WeChain has been devote ourselves to this path, to this direction, and we do have experiences. Um, I'm sure you, not every of them are funny experience or exciting experience. Some are really tough. Um, but we have some progress, and that's why we want to share this experience with everyone, like how we achieve business consensus. And going further, when you have a people with a, you know, right motivation and the, the economy motivation, allocation, and you want to do a new collaboration, then you need a fair rules, right? You need to, among all of the players, you need a fair rules. How are we going to play together? How are we going to encourage the good guys to do the right thing, to play the good face, encourage them, but kick the bad guys? Only say the greed of human nature is something you cannot control, or inevitably, there will be bad guys always. So we need that kind of a governance consensus. Like most of good people agree, we, we need to drive the technology to the next stage. We need to bring or build the great good for everyone, that kind of thing. So we need that kind of governance consensus. Not only for the government point of view or regulator point of view, but even among the different business entities, players, companies, enterprises, blockchain startups, we all wanted to build up that. Okay? So that's, that's we have been thinking beyond the technology. That's, I think, is the most of, um, let's say, missing part for the entire blockchain space. So not only we need a blockchain technical guys, but we also need the business guys. We also need experts how to run the project, how to build up a more sophisticated governance uh, for the projects. And also, the other sharing is how we're going to do that. We need to think about the integration with other technologies, because the blockchain is not really like a Superman can do everything by its own. Usually, you got to integrate with IoT, with AI, uh, with existing internet technologies. So blockchain is supposed to work on that. And also, most of the enterprise adoption, they don't really care about technology to, per se. They care about solutions. They care about what kind of solution can you know, really improve my efficiency, address my you know, issues, or create a new business value. They care about solutions other than just purely technology. Right? So we need, a, we need a, that kind of integration with others. And that, might, that means we need to align more team. Honestly, Vision did something really, um, I would say, in a luxury way. At the early stage of VeChain, we acquired an IoT team, which you know, my partners even say, like, why do that? We're a blockchain team. Why do I need to acquire an IoT team? Well, six months later, when we got the first case, everybody understand, well, when you go to the business application, when you go to the enterprise, you needed that kind of integration. However, at that time, the entire space, like no IoT team understand the blockchain, or blockchain team understand IoT. They even think about that's two competitive technologies in the market, which is not true. So we need that kind of um, collaboration between the different technologies and make it together. So that's very, very important. And also that's a very, um, let's say, key sharing or key learning for VeChain uh, to achieve today's progress. So as a summary, very exciting to say, until today, we have 31, or maybe 32, considering the last uh, yesterday case uh, with Diageo in, in Singapore. Um, it's 32 now. We have uh, 32 enterprise use cases up and running on the VeChain public blockchain. I, I'm very proud to say, I think we're not even one of them, but like one, the most used public blockchain by enterprise solutions, because we did lots of things. Because we think differently. Well, I'm gonna have a dedicated session about why VeChain, uh, so we can talk about that later, but I just wanna show you what the application looks like. Maybe it looks like really lame or really stupid or simple or whatever. It's not really like high-end, classic, chic, uh, you know, cool technology with a fancy animation or something. Not like that. It's down to your earth. It's very close to your life. So I want to show you what we have done with Walmart in China. 
Um, no more POC in the laboratory, please, but you can walk to the Walmart supermarkets and test by yourself. So let's take a look. All right. Do you have an internet with that? Let me see. Oh. YouTube link. Sorry, that's another place we're talking about the professional. We need to improve, right? Before the presentation, we need to rehearsal. We need to make sure it's running well. Don't worry, Yvette. I'm going to have a different talk with you. <laughs> so let's see. All right. Um, yeah, let's see. Well, I'm sorry for that, but um, could you take care of this? Actually, it's, in a, it's a TV program reporting in China. Walmart China built up this food traceability solution, and for the normal user, you can walk in to the supermarkets, you can find a special zoom we call traceability zoom. All of the mushrooms, meat, seafood, vegetables, you can just use your smartphone scan the code, you get all of the traceability information, and you feel safer. Um, only safe food safety is one of the major concerns for China market, so everybody loves that. Even, like I said, the people with like my mom's age, uh, 60, 65, they don't understand what blockchain is, but they use smartphone. And they can scan it and find it, oh, I know this mushroom is coming from that province and takes like 40 hours until I, I buy, and you know, with different temperature, that kind of thing. They will only say, maybe they don't understand what does it mean, but they kind of get the conclusion, this is I feel safe. So this is the blockchain technology, how to you know, get to people's life, get to um, um, normal people's life. So that's what I call, that's mass adoption. It's no more like a fancy animation, lights and sparkles, that kind of commercial to represent the high tech. The real high tech supposed to be invisible and serving people's daily life, and you don't need to feel it. It's invisible, right? Okay. All right, um, maybe later after that we can, you can Google, you can t you go to the YouTube and see the video, but you know, really, it's not really professional, we should improve. Um, so why VeChain? Firstly, it's about a mindset. VeChain has a different mindset as just a pure technical um, blockchain team, let's say. Um, we aiming for the real user volume, no more just, if we look at the Bitcoin or Ethereum, we're talking about half million users, half million addresses, like that. There is a n number to say, oh, Bitcoin may be used by 40 million people around the world, uh, considering the users from exchange as well. But actually, if we look at the real mass adoption, uh, the internet application platform, whatever, WeChat or Facebook, we're talking about a billion users. That's why when Libra started, it really created a big noise because we're talking about 2.3 or 2.7 billion users, maybe access, maybe using the technology. So I, even they're still under the big challenge and difficulties, I would say, but still, they have a very good fun foundation. They were a good, good base. So what Vichy wanted to do, um, only I really want to show the video about the Walmart case. Um, 
But that's something really we wanted to, um, to go for. We are aiming for that. And also, in terms of the technical features, um, we really look at the enterprise point of view. We think from enterprise and create something, let's say, enterprise user friendly. Um, we did something no one ever did before. Before we launch our main app, before we even go to the design, we talk to 30, 40 different executives of the different enterprise, top you know, Fortune 500 enterprise. Ask the same question over and over again. How do you want to build up your application on the blockchain? And what is a hurdle if you want to migrate your business to a public blockchain? What's your concern? What kind of the feature you are expecting? That kind of thing. And as a summary, not only about the governance model, economy model, consensus, um, but also technical integration. We talk about how to integrate with IoT AI, but also some of key features and tools like fee delegation, VeChain was the first one to launch that. And when we started to use uh, for the real case for almost a one year and you know some other platform are following up, which is good. Um, multitask transactions are able to send one transaction contains multiple calls to the different recipients, which is very common in a normal business world. Whatever, doing the collaboration of supply chain or simply just say you want to pay um, salary to employees. When you have uh, 200 employees, you want to use one transaction but pay to 200 people um, to save the unit cost about that, which can be done very easily on that. And also some like transaction dependency, uh, controllable transaction configurations. Uh, those are very close. Uh, only say it's not really a big deal. Well, it is a big deal, but it's quite, uh, let's say, think normal thinking from business point of view. Um, that's what we did. So technical features, of VeChain really create friendly interfaces for the others. And also, going further, not only think about the technical guys, but also about the business people. We said we need more builders. Uh, we need not only the technical team, because right now we are in the business consensus stage, we need more business people. So we wanted to provide a tool allow the you know, non-technical people are also can be the builder to build the business applications on the VeChain blockchain, that's the true chain. It's a one-stop service to allow the different users, even the small business enterprise, they can go through the format, sharing our experiences, um, you know, take advantage of our experiences to do the different case with, uh, you know, multiple different enterprises in the past three, four years, and go to um, blockchain very easily. <laughs> like uh, Mr. Sabotage from Singapore, Fuji T uh, from Japan, and bunch of, um, and also my story from DMVGO, we all coming from these parts. And they use this tool for enterprise blockchain adoption very easily. It's kind of like, in short, it's kind of like AWS for enterprise business applications. You don't need to build everything by yourself. You can just go to that platform, go to the two chain platform, and following the steps, 30 minutes, you have your business on the blockchain already. And you will be open the door and go to explore, able to explore more business applications. And going further, for sure, we have more technical portfolios to keep polishing, keep upgrade the business applications, uh, keep upgrade the opportunities um, with multiple different, um, let's say, technical portfolios. Um, for sure, we're not going to stop there. We're going to go further to keep building the new tools, new services. So I'm telling the jokes to my team, like we want to be the jeans um, maker for everybody in the world because you can wear jeans to be stylish, to be fashion, to do the labor work, to run even. Um, so we want to make jeans. We want to make a common standard tool with you know, very simple design and to help everybody to be the builder of the blockchain. And very key point is, only say forget about those portfolios, forget about these tools. It's kind of like showing the muscle like we're really good about technology or so. But in the end, we want to help everybody to use this, to use the tool chain as a very simple tool. Yesterday, I had a meeting with some, someone 
uh, in San Francisco, when I order a coffee, they bring me so many options. I was like, well, I, I don't care. Just bring me a coffee. They ask, what kind of beans? What kind of size? What kind of flavor? I say, I don't want. I just want a coffee. I just want to keep awake, <laughs> right? So sometimes enterprise need a very standard and a common tool they can get started. Because every enterprise, they, they, they should, they will have different customization requirements or needs, but they need to get something very easy and standard to get started, and then they can explore. So that's why, you know, we bring this uh, tool for, uh, for that. And as a summary, we have not only the enterprise application, but also um, the startup as well, uh, to do the different application on the VeChain blockchain. I'm not gonna go through that. So in summary, why VeChain? In summary, why so many big enterprises are building public blockchain applications, and we also have like more than a thousand, in, uh, a thousand leads in the pipeline to line up to try to use. That's also one of the reasons we wanna push two chain because it's a common tool, everybody can do the self-service to bring the application. So in summary, we do have the proven case to show we have a capability, and also we not only about the technical team, but also we have a business development team, and the, those technical features really be friendly to the enterprise, and last but not least, we have a unique and different comprehensive um, governance model, economic model, um, and integration with other technologies. Um, so honestly, that's a summary of VeChain, and you know, I I hope we'll have more builders come on build, come 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 to a VeChain blockchain to build more applications. So um, join us, be part of the journey. Okay. Yes. Uh, sure. I can show uh, the sure. Um, Yvette, could you show the warm-up video here? So I can just show you um, um, application very easily. I'm wearing this sneaker. Um, it's actually done by Mr. Sabotage, a customer designer from Singapore. There is a chipset in my uh, sneakers. And um, I just use my smartphone to scan it and I get all of the traceability information. So you can hear the beeps. And when you read about chips, um, you show you know, the basic information. First, they do the blockchain verification. And then they show the, I think my network is not running well here. Yeah, I only got like two bars on my SIM card. Oh, OK. And also, you got pop up of the basic information. Um, Suppose a picture to show up, the network is really so. Um, if we go to the more information, uh, you can see more pictures, you know, digital video contents. It's kind of like a create a new portal for, um, to, uh, for those brands to talk to the talk to the customer. Like let your product be your sales. No more just sales guy in the store. Um, so for example, you can go to the website if you really like it. Uh, you can have a traceability information to show like from Jakarta to Singapore, and also you have a digital contents, the designer himself, Mr. Sabotage, will tell you the story. Um, like you are holding one of the 11 pairs of sneakers. This is one of 11, I'm really proud of that. Um, and also more information um, about the product itself. So yeah, let's, let's see the Walmart case. I'm sorry it's in Chinese. Um, but it's real. I mean, it's, you go to the TV program. So mushroom, vegetables, meats, and seafood. You just use WeChat. You can use any kind of uh, QR code scanner. It says it shows you know the basic information, origins, traceability, and even certification from authorities like this product is safe to consume. And even some conditioning about the storage, about the transportation. Um, yeah, that's all of the traceability. And the different time steps for the critical steps.
and different critical steps during the transportation. In the past, everybody here see the V? That's V chain. <laughs> so actually, the lady just explained in the Chinese. She said, oh, blockchain is very important. I, I'm sure she doesn't understand. But she said, blockchain is very important. Because of blockchain, we can make sure it's real. And it's like the data is, is really authentic. That's what she said. I, that's what normal people need to know. And that's, you know, the enterprise can bring the, the technology to the mass adoption. Right? Yeah, that's another one. We got a mini. So uh, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Uh, so as I mentioned, we have a lot of important figures in the VeChain ecosystem. So uh, uh, I'm a friend of VeChain, and I run one of the largest crypto media and consulting firm based in China, Shanghai. And we have Sunny, you all met him. And also we have Zach, we have John, and we have Xiaoning. So why don't we have some short introduction of each of you? Uh, do you need a microphone or? Yeah. Um, I guess I don't need to waste the time to introduce myself, right? <laughs> um, so I just directly pass to Zach. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Zach. I'm a co-founder and CEO of CyberX. Uh, we do uh, market making, OTC trading, as well as uh, advanced uh, trading terminals. Hey everyone, I'm John Dempsey, uh, founding director of Eight Hours Foundation and we're building a platform that uh, facilitates human interaction and powers the true uh, social element of games uh, using Playtable. Uh, hi everyone, um, I'm Xiaoning from OceanX. So, uh, OceanX is a uh, power, uh, AI powered chain and uh, we aim to uh, uh, bridge the traditional financial and uh, the crypto asset. So uh, we we are uh, I think we try to uh, inside of the ecosystem to to help a lot of uh, the common users to come to the crypto world. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have uh, I have some more generic questions for each of them, and then followed by a more specific questions for each. Yeah, so my first question is actually about the, like all of you have been involved in this industry by different years and different time frame. So what do you see the changes in the past few years and what are the growths of public blockchain and the innovation you see based on your own personal experiences? Yeah. Well, um, Vision started quite early in 2015. Even personally, I started to get involved with Bitcoin since 2013. Um, change is the main theme for the entire blockchain space. I think nothing changed in the space is always changing. Um, specifically to the application side, um, we can see the dynamics uh, really improve, really you know, uh, goes for lots of progress in the past years. When we start with the first client, uh, Givenchy in Paris, I, use my, I have to use my old connection. I used to work in the Louis Vuitton, so I went to my previous boss and you know try to convince him to do the blockchain application on VeChain. And I spent 20, 20 minutes and he kind of gave up. He said, oh, Sonny, I don't understand what even a single word you say. Uh, just tell me what to do. So luckily, I was, um, he trusted me a lot and we started to get one SKU with Givenchy and now we cover 100% of leather goods um, you know, after two, three years. But nowadays, um, it's totally different we can have lineup of possible leads from the different enterprises across the whole world is coming for either ask for experiences, ask for opportunities. Um, so we're kind of facing the real ch new challenge is how to answer them all, how to you know, bring the new tool, new platform, uh, standard service, professional service to answer them all. So that's, uh, that becomes a new challenge. But the market is really dynamic right now. And especially last weekend, um, when the China started to have a big announcement, like I said in the beginning, you know, the low, those larger enterprises are running at a startup speed. And no one sleep even after 11 p.m. of Saturday and asking for a proposal, right? So I think it's good. It's, it's quite a positive sign for every blockchain pioneers, players, 
And that's a new era for everybody to go to the next stage for massive adoptions. Uh, uh, from my experience, because I'm more from uh, trading side, so uh, you know, I think personally, uh, I got into uh, blockchain trading like uh, two, three years ago, and I used to work at investment bank uh, at UBS. So uh, you know, for this whole three years, I do see a lot of uh, actually my past colleague uh, from hedge fund from. Uh, you know, invest bank uh, side that they start uh, joining uh, the blockchain movement. They, they start looking to uh, this uh, asset. How does it trade and get more interested? So I definitely see a lot of uh, uh, more interest in this space. And and from a public chain standpoint, I think uh, you know chains such as V Chain, it's gave a really good foundation for the you know the newer projects. So I think the uh, the New York application project, they don't have to focus on the infrastructure anymore. I think they are more uh, focusing on their application itself. And so they can uh, spend more time on that instead of uh, doing the, the, you know, the base stuff. And then uh, uh, it's easier for them to uh, actually to get less on the market, start secondary trading as well as you know, doing their own project. So I think uh, definitely I see it's uh, you know, having something like a VeChain as a basis, it's really good for them. Yeah, uh, over the past two years, I think definitely I've seen so many different ideas for blockchain uh, applications, use cases. Um, more and more people uh, and businesses are interested in it and saying, oh, what can that blockchain actually do for my business if everyone's talking about it? Um, and I think over, over time, we've seen a, a few specific patterns emerge, like things that are kind of obvious if you've been in the industry for a long time, but um, like we know that users need an easier way to access their cryptocurrency than you know a 12 word phrase and secret key that you lose and then you lose all, everything forever. Um, we need apps for people to to use and play and understand that's you know going to make sense to you if you don't care about the technology. Um, and I think that we've seen a lot of different ideas and approaches of the supportive infrastructure around this. Uh, a lot of different ways to build exchanges, a lot of different technologies for blockchain, um, delegated proof of stake, proof of work, and so on. And, and we, we kind of know what, how to build the infrastructure, um, but we're definitely in that uh, business consensus phase, I think. Uh, actually, I joined the industry from two, uh, 2013 and uh, start from mining. So uh, I think, you, uh, you know, I, I built uh, a kind of OG of uh, crypto. Uh, yeah, I, I do the first mining farm in China with Ji Han Wu, the, the, the founder of uh, Bitmain. There's a lot of uh, yeah, gossip now. And, uh, you know, uh, after that, uh, uh, our team, we built the first ATM in China. And uh, we make an operation of uh, ATM uh, in Japan. In 2017, we got the first, uh, we, I think we, we are the first branch of uh, the license exchange uh, in Japan, so we, we got one of uh, 16 exchange license uh, in, in Japan. So uh, actually, during the past six years, uh, so I do uh, the mining. We design some chips for for ASIC, and uh, uh, I I invest in some tokens, some ICO, some private sales, and uh, until uh, I think 2017, I met uh, actually I know Sunny for for more than four or five years, but you know, uh, in the early stage, most of the people inside of this industry, they are focused on the mining, because that's uh, the most uh, money-making business. And uh, the exchange also there. But now we see lots of uh, applications now, and uh, the people try to focus on uh, compliance. I think two years before, no one cared about Compliance. Yeah. They, they use a lot of uh, ways to, to o open exchange. They, they, they just, uh, just uh, trading maybe is the most part of uh, uh, blockchain. But now, you know, last week, President Xi just uh, say, oh, we need to focus on uh, the application. So, so I, see, I, see, I think in the, in the coming months, or maybe coming weeks, more and more uh, staff will focus on compliance and uh, to, to help the people to use blockchain technology 
with uh, no knowledge of blockchain. Just uh, uh, it's kind of like you use the internet, but you do not need to know the TCP, TCP IP proposal. Yeah. So I think uh, in, we will just uh, focus on compliance, transparency, and uh, to help the people to use blockchain technology. Well, so I think based on what I've just shared, like, Xiaomi must be very rich since you <laughs> start mining Bitcoin since 2013 and you start sort of exchanging stuff and investing in a lot of ICOs. Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, so I'm thinking that, so you are, I believe you are all very experienced builders for this industry. I'm wondering what specific trends you are seeing in the coming year, like in 2020. Do you see a specific trend? And I think Sonny also mentioned a lot of times about mass adoption. So how are you, each of you, going to contribute to the mass adoption? Well, I guess um, the presentation I did like a couple of minutes ago just answered that question perfectly. Um, in summary, I would say um, we're going to make sure the VeChain team goes through from technical consensus focus to be business consensus focus and help to build up more governance consensus with others, not only the enterprise, but the regulators, the players as, as a startup in the blockchain space. Um, secondly, we're gonna focus on more to generate the standard tools and services to enable more builders, um, whatever they have a technology or they don't have, but they have business ideas, you know, they have this or that, but they're missing this or that, and we try to facilitate the in entire ecosystem uh, to help everyone to be a qualified builders, uh, able to build the valuable transactions, and using the technology to help, you know, generate the new value uh, in, in terms of uh, mass adoptions. Uh, I think from my standpoint, it's more, um uh, from trend standpoint, I, I think there are going to be more asset. Maybe it's um, not just only financial asset, or and then other assets going to be connected to the chains, uh, you know, V chain and others. And then uh, you know, we are actually a market maker, so we do work with a lot of projects. So I think one of our goals is to make the the price relatively stable. And uh, you know, I, I don't think it's uh, it's good for. I mean, I think I think projects should uh, mostly focus on their application instead of like pure secondary pricing. So that's one of our goals is to make sure that there are enough uh, market liquidity and the price is relatively stable so everyone's actually working on the project itself instead of just staring at the screen all the time. Yeah. Uh, one thing I definitely see improving um, in the near future is accessibility to end users. Um, you know, as we see more apps being developed, um, you can download on your iOS, you can download on your Android, and those interact directly with blockchain. And that means that people, they're one step away from being involved in this ecosystem that we have. Um, they also have more opportunity to buy cryptocurrency, to um, get themselves involved in the ecosystem, to um, you know, join the social media, find out what Telegram is if they've never been on it before. Um, they get to uh, download, uh, basically experience all of the things that blockchain has to offer uh, on web format. Um, and, and, and know what it's truly about. Uh, for exchange, I think uh, uh, it's easy for us. Yeah, we just uh, to be more professional, more uh, transparency, security, and uh, to try to find uh, some better project and uh, some better asset we can provide, we can connect with uh, the project and uh, the potential investor, yeah. And uh, we, we also try to, I think, uh, work close with the e public blockchain ecosystem, yeah, to help them to find a, a place they can trust, they can trust uh, to, to put their asset or their money into the exchange and they can, the, they can find a good place to trade in, yeah. So uh, that's, I think that's uh, what we need to do in, in the next year, yeah. Mm -hmm. versus 
Uh, yeah, I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, I think two years before I talked, I think just one year before I talked to Sunny and also talked to Jackson about uh, how a blockchain ecosystem to work. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, OceanX, we are the first one to, to say that we try to the closely to work with the ecosystem. So I think uh, also we start from the part of, we still are uh, part of the uh, ecosystem because uh, I'm also the advisor of VeChain and uh, I, my, my, my work is to help the tokens to be listed on exchange from 2017. And uh, a lot of uh, projects, they, they face a problem. They, they are hard to be listed. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, we have tried to close with the public blockchain because the chain is not as easy as the users think. It's quite hard to make the ecosystem better and better. So I think Binance or uh, Huobi, they also to, to list their public blockchain because there's a, for them it's more easy to list the asset. Maybe their, their major purpose is to list more and more assets to, to the blockchain. But uh, I think the public blockchain is not uh, just uh, you list the asset. You need to, to find more and more, I think, valuable valuable project come in and then you can list it. So uh, in my opinion, we just focus on to make a compliance and a professional trading platform to work with different great public blockchain. That's fine. So, um, but maybe in, in the later, uh, we, want to, we also plan to do some DEX, but we need to find a solution to do that. That's a different uh, story, I think. But for now, we just focus on to make the exchange better and better because, you know, uh, exchange, I think, is it's the most difficult part inside of this industry. You know, uh, the security is uh, quite important and we need to take care of everything. So we work close with uh, uh, the VeChain, we work close with uh, Starbucks and also we work close with uh, such as uh, play table the the great product, yeah. So so that's my opinion. We need just to focus on one point. Yeah. Well, I think that's the best part about the VeChain. Um, the VeChain is focused on like enterprise level platform, not only for big enterprises, but also for small business, but also for startups. And because we have so much, so many business opportunities out there and also the partners out there, it's very easy to, uh, to do a synergy. Um, I can give you a couple examples. There is a startup, it's called No Way in a Box. They actually provide a salmon fish, very fresh salmon fish from Norway to China market. So when they try to go to the China market and they choose to bring, let's say they choose to build up the blockchain application um, on VeChain blockchain, right? And we are able to easily to synergize with DMVGL to based on the data they provide, the traceability they provide, and secure by blockchain to generate the business assurance. And also the PICC as an insurance company, um, they are very easy to join as well because we're in the same ecosystem. They just wait a moment, you have a data, you have a sole party digital assurance services, I can create a micro insurance based on every box of uh, salmon fish. So this kind of opportunity, can really, like a multiple effects, multiple value, find a new value out of the synergy, whatever your big enterprise and small, um, small business. And also, we were talking about the play table. I've been talking to John uh, several times. It's a gaming station, but it could be an educational gaming station. And honestly, um, I don't know for the others, but at least for China market, it's a huge, massive market. You know, parents have spent a huge amount of money to try to encourage the kids 
to not only learn, but learn with the funds so they are able to motivate them to learn more, right? So that kind of business opportunities, um, geographically, um, business collaboratively, um, we can have much more, I, I think we are the most opportunities or synergy opportunities uh, in the world in terms of blockchain ecosystem. So speaking of uh, the Playtable and the ARs Foundation, I heard that it's getting the utility token is getting popular. There are a lot of inquiries about you guys. So, wondering that right right now, uh, VeChain also have his own exchanges and also a lot several other exchanges outside or within the egg ecosystem. So, what what value do you see from our exchanges when you are choosing one to start with or to work with? Yeah, I think the um, when it comes to finding uh, the right exchange and the right fit um, for a platform, I think you have to think about the community um, and the kind of communities that's forged around Playtable, uh, around eight hours, and the people that's been giving us inquiries like, oh, these apps, uh, how do I play it? How do I get ERTs? How do I play the apps to use the ERTs? Where can I buy it? Um, I think that you know finding the right uh, culture fit is important. Um, people who believe that uh, play is healthy, that we should uh, encourage as much uh, interaction with each other as possible. Um, and I think just expanding overall, like, this mission uh, of uh, mass adoption of blockchain, uh, making sure that uh, end users have just as much accessibility um, and opportunity to get involved with uh, blockchain as anyone else. So my, my that last two questions for Zach. Uh, so the first one is that uh, there was a recent announcement about the strategic partnership with uh, OceanX from CyberX. Uh, can you give a little bit more context about that? And the second question I have for you is, as a sophisticated trader, I think you mentioned that earlier, um, what do you see the different trading strategies between the sophisticated traditional trader versus the uh, crypto newbies or people who only trade trade on cryptocurrencies, yeah. Thanks. Maybe I'll answer the second question first. Uh, like, uh, I think that uh, some of the key differences is like for uh, crypto world is 24-7 uh, trading versus equity is not, right? And then uh, it's uh, definitely more volatile, uh, less liquidity. There's no uh, central regulators. So from that, you know, all this aspect make it uh, you know, as you know, someone trading this market, you need to be more uh, diligent. You have to look at your risk management system, and as well as uh, you know, uh, you know, because there's a low liquidity, so you have to be aware of uh, market impact. I.e., if you buy or sell anything, it's gonna affect the price. Uh, I think that's uh, part of the reason, actually, we're leading to the second question that we, um, you know, we're, we're partner up with uh, in OceanX, where we develop a. A set of trading software, which is basically uh, try to uh, minimize that market impact. So um, you know that system we, because we are coming from traditional world where there are actually a lot of uh, professional tools out there. But when we come over here into the crypto world, we see there are actually less of those kind of uh, really professional trading tools. So uh, you know, for instance, if you want to buy sell. Bitcoin or VET or what, hopefully mostly buy, um, you know, then uh, if you want to do a big chunk, uh, you actually gonna move the market because you know you move the market price. So a lot of time from the traditional world, what we do is actually we make a uh, order that's like through like a trading terminal. Then you can uh, put an order that's automatically at the uh, mid price of the market or at the maybe just below the offer price, and then as market move. Uh, the terminal will automatically cancel the previous order and then put a new order. So in that way, you can buy or sell whatever coin you want at just right at the market price without affecting market too much. Because otherwise, if you do a big, you know, big order, then you're just gonna move the whole market, and then you actually you end up buying or selling at you know worse price than you should be. So that's a, for instance, that's the thing we offer. Uh, we you know our terminal is. It's free and it's uh, both uh, PC and Mac native. And uh, we do other stuff. For instance, we have a, 
uh, portfolio management tools where uh, you can see your portfolio across uh, exchanges. And also uh, we do uh, monitor because we, as a market maker, we do have a view on all the coins price. So we, we give a fair market value price for all the old coins. So you actually can see the, what's our view or F fair value price of each coin through our terminals. And yeah, so we do various, uh, you know, like data service to our uh, end user, hopefully, uh, you know, that they can make better decision on, you know, whether they want to buy or sell. So that's, uh, yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, I think that's all for our sessions for today. And thank you all for being here and hope you enjoy our session and learn a lot. So uh, I think all, uh, most of us are based in China. So consider recent like Satoshi <laughs> booming. <laughs> I think like all of you are welcome to talk to each of us to learn more about China or VeChain and the exchange ecosystem. Thank you guys. Um,